the biggest crowd in WNBL history, a proud moment. It's over, an epic game three. And Southside are through to their third grand final in four seasons. Reed swoops on the crowd, a massive basket. Three, you are kidding me. And the fire burn brightest. Townsville are WNBL champions for the fourth time. WNBL last season, they'll be looking to go one better again this year. They host the Melbourne Boomers. Welcome to the State Basketball Centre for Game 1 of the Michelle Timms Cup and the first home game of the Southside Flyers season. My name is Liam Ellison. Joined alongside me is Laurie Chiswick. And Laurie, this one is a huge, huge game. Melbourne Derby. Oh, it is. Whenever you have that <coughs> crosstown rivalry, M Michelle Timms Cup, it's always great to see. And, and we've had some switching within these two teams. Uh, Liam, it's a bit of a revolving door. It's two, three players from Southside have gone to Melbourne and two from Melbourne have gone to Southside. So it'll be interesting how they match up against each other. Absolutely. Changing teams between the rivals. That is certainly a, a controversial decision, if you like. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm sure that Sarah Blitzarves will be all Melbourne at the moment. Let's look in at the imports as well. And there's some big names here we should highlight. And Mercedes Russell coming back to the league. She is. She's one of the original, the OG from the Flyers a few years ago, and it's great to see her back in the competition. And supporting her from the USA is also Jasmine Dickey. Quick, fast, explosive guard. Excited to see her. You've been doing some ring arounds as well. Nas Hillman, I've heard big things. Yeah, look, she's been, uh, she played in her first game against Adelaide, and I was really impressed with her. She top scored for 14 points. She's very much undersized, but she is strong. She is a hard worker. She does the blue collar work and really fits well in what uh, Chris Lucas wants for his team. Well, Jordan Canada as well. The import for the Melbourne Boomers led the WNBA in steals per game this year, 2.3, and only joined the team around 10 days ago. Laurie, of course, played the first game on the Wednesday night as the Boomers got the job done to the tune of eight points. They did. That was a big road win for them. And I, I think with the amount of turnover of players that Melbourne have, it may take them a little while to gel. Uh, so that was a good first up win for them because eight players, for whatever reason, have gone to various places. Mia Murray, we know, retired. Some of the imports weren't coming back. So Chris Lucas really has a fresh roster to work with. Only really Christy Wallace, Panina Davidson is uh, back in the lineup. And we know that Christy Wallace, we won't see her suiting up tonight. She had knee surgery following her WNBA season, is still rehabbing, and I think hoping to come back beginning of December. I'll be looking forward to her inclusion, that's for sure. And of course, the games to come as well in round one before we get underway here at the State Basketball Centre. The UC Capitals hosting the Adelaide Lightning, 5.30 p.m. local time. That is going to be terrific as well. And speaking of Panetta Davidson, who we heard of just a few moments ago, Laurie, Chris Lucas was really stoked with her work in the opening game and noted that it might be the best or is the best preseason he's seen from her. Well, she had a great uh, Asia Cup. I was there commentating that, and she was playing for New Zealand, was named in the All-Star Five. And so for her to continue that on in that form in the WNBL is really important. She came off the bench, which is interesting, and I believe she'll be coming off the bench tonight as well. But wow, she was really impressive, and Chris was impressed with her in that first game. Had a double-double, 12 points, 10 rebounds, six of which were offensive boards from Panina Davidson. We're not far away now. The Melbourne Boomers, how good does their Indigenous jersey look as well, Laurie? As all teams, they're just brilliant additions to Indigenous round in round one of the Signet WNBL. Well, we love it when it's Indigenous round, and it's it's really special this year that it, it comes in round one and not sort of later on in the program. And, and they're teaming up with the NBL to really make a focus of Indigenous round for basketball in general. And it's, it's such a strong, powerful movement to be able to do that. But I always love the uniforms. I always think there's a case to wear them throughout the season, maybe as their home strip or their away strip, but they are fantastic. I'm with you there. The more we see 
medium, the better. And Danita Davidson as well, interestingly enough, will come off the bench once again. That's working well for Chris Lucas's setup. And the WNBL app is the new addition to this season in the league. And hasn't it been awesome, Laurie? It's finally here. We don't want you to miss a minute of the action. Live scores, highlights, player and team info and more. All available for free on the WNBL app in wherever you get your apps. Not far away. Here's the Boomers starting five. Blitz arms out there, Canada, Hillman. Froling, Alicia Froling, who's come from Sydney. She's been a good recruit that's come from Sydney. Really, um, you know, somebody that they uh, will look to use. And you can see the starters for the Flyers. Beck Cole, Dickey, Rochi, Potch, and Russell. But really, it's who is on the bench. Lauren Jackson, Leilani Mitchell, Carly Ernst. That's starters for any other team. Absolutely. We are going to await Lauren Jackson's entrance with great anticipation. And here we go. Mercedes Russell wins it down. The first tip for the Flyers. And we are away at the State Basketball Centre. Here's Cole. Announced skipper during the week for Southside. Dumps it down low to Russell. Not quite on the first look. Dickey on the offensive rebounds. And Hillman cleans it up. It's so nice to see Mercedes Russell's back in the league. I really rate her as a player, her high intellect. She's a great defensive player. Uh, and, you know, she needs to... It'll be fun to see her working in conjunction with Lauren Jackson. Robin Lard, Offensive Player of the Year. She was Mercedes Russell in the 2019-20 season. And the call from the referee. Stays with the Boomers. Great crowd for this uh, Crosstown Derby. Uh, I think it's almost sold out there, so it's always a great atmosphere at the State Centre. None the more so when these two teams play for the first leg of the Michelle Timms Cup. Fans on their feet, and Beck Cole with the steal. And she can waltz in for an easy two in the first points for the Flyers. Really excited for Beck Cole this year. She's named captain. This is her 14th season in the WNBL, and it is the first time she's captained a team. So she's really excited about that, and so she should be. A mainstay now for this Southside franchise. Of course, a former boomer as well, Beck Cole. A mainstay across the signet WNBL. Keely Froling will inbound. Huge off-season addition. Trading bigs they did, the Boomers and the Flames. Kayla George going up north as Blitz arrives to the rack. Not that time. Potch in transition now. Three on two situation. Potch will go herself. Potch is just so long and athletic. And you can see as she approached this, the key level, the seam line, she just hesitated a bit and then exploded to finish that basket off. Blitz arrives, skips over to Hillman. Now Jordan Canada. Blitz Arves puts it behind her back, assessing. Five seconds. Foul call going against the Flyers. I imagine Sarah has a little bit of nerves playing against her, her old team in, in the south side. I'm sure. And the last time, of course, she played in the Michelle Tim's Cup game, or at least when these two teams were involved, it was a semi final win for the Flyers as they booked their ticket. Right here on this very floor. Oh my goodness, what a game that was. A one-point game of game three of the finals. It was incredible. Great series. There's Canada for three. Just short front position there is Reed. Really substitution for the Boomers. Now Blitzards can step into a three. And it's Hillman this time. So south side, it's B. Rocci who draws the foul. Have the basketball. She named the vice captain for the Flyers as well. That's one of those fouls from uh, Reed that, as a coach, you're happy that they're trying to be aggressive, but it was a really a foul that wasn't necessary. Um, so you want to be careful of those sorts of fouls. Poch in the wing position. Great cut from Rochi in the pass from Poch. Just as good, but it's a turnover. We actually saw the Boomers get hurt a little bit in the early stages of that Adelaide game with backdoor cuts, just trying to be a bit too aggressive in playing front foot denial. So we'll see if that uh, they've remedied that in this game. Canada calling the shots for the Boomers. 
They've had some terrific import guards in recent years, the Melbourne Boomers. Jordan Canada hoping to be the next in line as Russell pulls down the defensive rebound. Matty Rocci. Two defenders there. And Mercedes Russell falls in her lap and she drains the fadeaway too. How easy did she make that look? He's frolling. She's got such length, doesn't she, Laurie? Mercedes Russell as Poch speaking of length. Speaking of length is right. Into transition, Cole in the corner, makes the three ball. Great start, Southside. Nine zip one, and we've got a timeout on the floor. And this place is pumping, Laurie. It is. You could see Beck Cole after she shot that. She raised her hands, getting the crowd involved. I just made a three. And immediately, Coach Chris Lucas calls a timeout to steady, steady his charges. And this timeout brought to you by our major partners at the WNBL Signet. Australian owned, Australian designed. Signet is powering the WNBL with its extensive range of digital accessories, including power banks. Charging cables, wall charges, and so much more. Signet is powering up your favourite players this season on and off the court. Power every moment with Australia's number one digital accessories brand. Visit Signet.com. Great start here. Game one of the Michelle Tims Cup, Laurie. Well, we knew for, for Melbourne it was always going to be a hard ass this game. They're without three of their guards, Christy Wallace, M M uh, Monique Conti, and Amy Rocci. So they're a little top-heavy right now, and they're not particularly tall, whereas Southside, they are so tall, so long, very athletic. They can rotate different players into different positions. Um, so Melbourne really are up against it in today's game, but Melbourne also have tenacity and effort, never give up. Yeah, they have extreme length, as you mentioned, and plenty more to come off the bench as well. Carly Ernst, Lauren Jackson, the list goes on. When you add in Nadia Poch at the wing position, it's defensively a very, very well put together roster. He's frolling, they're pressing up the flies. Healy frolling in the backcourt. Dickey there with defense. Here's Tara Reid. Ten seconds for Canada to work with. Five seconds. Nice find down low to Nas Hillman. Her first points of the ball game. That was really good poise to, to hit Hillman on that pick and roll. Watching. Watch at the top of the perimeter. Nice read inside to Beck Cole. One more from the line to come. Beck Cole is pumped. That was just a nice little curl off that high screen and uh, good tip find by her teammate. Now she finds herself at the line with that and one. Yeah, she's come out like this is her house, Laurie Chiswick, the skipper for the Flyers. Well, she said to me when I was chatting to her earlier that she had refound her love of the game. Uh, she had sort of lost in the woods the last couple of years and, and just through some various you know outcomes but wow big, she is there today big block from Mercedes Russell oh. sorry Laurie and that is what she does the defensive presence down low in the keyway expect lots of that this season so Cole there defending the inbounds Froling there's a breakdown and Blitzarves makes him pay it's always nice when you're a coach of the, say, the Melbourne Boomers when you execute a baseline play to perfection. Not so much if you're Cheryl Chambers. Canada can rip down the rebound and go. They've got the numbers here, the Boomers. Floater a little strong. And Cole's there to clean it up. So Beck Cole will call the shots here. Dickey steps into a three off the window. <laughs> Hillman releases Cherie Kalia at the three throw line. Hillman goes to work and put the elbow into Potch. Offensive foul. Thought it was going that way, Laurie. Hesitated for a moment well, to the referee. I, I thought that was a, a late call. It was a bit indecisive. Which way are we going to go here? Maybe they were looking at each other, but... Uh, Regardless, an offensive foul was called. Yeah, the right call, you think, in the end. Flies basketball. Rochi. And 
coming in late to contest was Kalia. Good defense. All clean, said the ref. Canada off to the races. Nice handoff to Nas Hillman with the two. And that's what the, the strength of Canada. She can push the ball. She's a great facilitator. She had her partner in crime out there, Hillman, running the floor, and it was a nice little pass. Cole assessing. Russell's posting up as well. Contested Jay from Cole, won't go. And Canada at the elbow, pulls up, won't go. He is frolling on the follow. Back to a four-point ball game. Halfway through the first quarter here at the State Basketball Centre. And the subs coming out for the Flyers as Canada rises up to contest the pass. And here comes Leilani Mitchell, Carly Ernst and Lauren Jackson. And listen to the crowd. Welcome her back for another season in the Signet WNBL. The 22nd year as a professional player. Just nine months after rupturing her Achilles. And a broken foot to go with it as well, Laurie. Unbelievable. And doesn't she look fit? That's been the word, hasn't it, out of the Flyers' it camp? It has, yeah. And I did watch a practice match between these two teams, and she was getting up and down the floor really well. That's just so exciting, and you could hear the ovation as well from the Flyers fans to have her back out there. And sometimes I think it's not only just the Flyers fans, it's fans around the whole league. How lucky are we to have somebody of her caliber and her experience still playing in our competition? Yeah, totally agree. A real treat for world basketball fans. Potch just gets there. Two seconds, got to go just in time. And missing on the lay-in. Now Canada finds Froling and Potch. Big time denial. Now Leilani Mitchell. Will they go quick south side? Mitchell hangs in the air, not quite. Stays, flies ball. This is fast-paced basketball up and down. Two blocks in a row at either end. And we've seen that length that we highlighted already from the Flyers. Mercedes Russell with a block, Potch as well. And here's Leilani on the inbounds. LJ working hard to get open in the post. Penina Davidson in defense of Lauren Jackson, her first points of the Signet WNBL season. I feel if Lauren Jackson gets the ball anywhere in the low block, in the, in the uh, dunker circle, and she gets it in that right place, it's muscle memory for her. She just turns around in that pull-up jump shot. Yeah, it's automatic. Automatic. It's Potch in the open floor. So dangerous in his position. And what a foul, the Boomers. A little ginger to get up, Nadia Potch. Looks to be okay. Well, we haven't even had a chance to say uh, Cherie Kalia, she's actually uh, an injury replacement for Christy Wallace. Um, Boomers are certainly hoping Christy's back, uh, I, I think, in the beginning of December. But, you know, to come in and she's had a, a great preseason with them. And I think a great recruit to have. She's an elite three-point shooter. And she's really done well uh, to replace Christy so far. Yeah, an injury replacement player that's able to come right in and play meaningful minutes from the jump. Cherie Kalia is Potch. Put on the second. And with that last substitution from the Flyers as well, Laurie, it means it's the first time that Leilani Mitchell and Lauren Jackson have ever played together. I wasn't aware of that as Froling puts up the three ball. Megan Huswait on Twitter highlighted that. It seems hard to believe. It does. I didn't realize that either. Um, they're both such superstars of the competition and in their own right. And uh, again, just so great to see them back and, and playing together on the floor. And we see Maddie Rocci enters the game again now. About to eat the flies. Sideline ball boomers. Canada. Into the post is Blitzarves. Good defense again from Poch. Great start from her. Mitchell assesses Jackson in transition. Just short that time. And who else but Poch diving on it with a hustle. It's going to go the way of the Boomers. Seven point ball game. So it's really important for the Boomers that they 
They get the ball through hands now. They they test the waters defensively for against south side and, and you know, see where they're at defensively because they, you know, we know the scoring power of the Flyers and they can easily turn a seven point margin into a 17 point margin. These blitz offs on the perimeter, Poch defending, puts the ball on the deck. A reaching call. There's Matty Rochi there. It might be Poch who's been assessed with a personal. Just the first personal on Nadia Poch. Good crowd here in attendance for game one of the Michelle Tins Cup, as we've come to expect at the State Basketball Centre. Of course, the former home of the Boomers as well. Now operating on a park field as Blitzarves drains the first. So is that Southside fans now trying to put off their uh, their ex-player and Sarah Blitzarves? That's a cold world, Laurie. It is a cold world. You move on quickly. Absolutely. And she goes two of two. Once you cross that line, there's no, no friends, take all enemies. No, that's right, and there's been plenty of players across the years who've played for both the Boomers, Flyers, formerly Rangers. Oh, picked off by Jordan Canada, great defense. Back within a single possession, the Boomers. That's a good scout by the team. They knew they wanted that ball reversal, and Canada just picked it off easily. Leilani Mitchell. Releases Rochi. She looks to take Canada off the dribble. Mitchell's in the corner. Dickey, that is a double dribble. Two minutes remain here in the first quarter. And Cherie Kalia running the one on this play. Canada. As Davidson with the pick to her right, opts for it. Now rolling to the hoop, goes herself, Jordan Canada. Davidson causing a lot of issues, but they do enough south side. Leilani releases Dickey. That's come off Dickey as well. Clean defense from Kelly Froling. What a great pickup for the Melbourne Boomers, Keely Froling. She was really, uh, you know, an important piece in Sydney, and she's such a great player. She's a, a worker. She can get the rebound. She's worked on her game, so she's not only a great finisher, she's a good shooter from the outside as well. Jordan Canada with the floater. It's good. Rolls home. We've got a ball game now, Liam. We do have a ball game. As you suspect, Melbourne Derbies, they, they always deliver, Laurie. Here's LJ at the top. Cole, great look to Rochi. Blitzarves was there. And all clean. They'll rip it away here, Melbourne. Davidson in the vicinity. Dumps it down low. Jackson and Davidson. And a walking call, says the ref. So Leilani. Calls for an inbounder, and Russell comes to assist. A lot of excitement in the Southside camp to return Mercedes Russell. It's been three years, three and a half years, really, since last saw her in a Southside uniform. Played without imports as well in recent years, as LJ in the post is denied. That's the work of Keely Froling. Big rejection. Blitzarves at the top is Froling. Oh, Mercedes Russell easily dealt with that. Put out the left bit and out of bounds it goes. Yeah, what nice wingspan that is. Got to be close to biggest in the league, you'd think. In terms of wingspan, he's Blitzarves on the inbound. The screen is Kalia. And Davidson rolling to the hoop. Blitz arms, five seconds to work. We've got a shooter in the corner. Goes herself. Davidson on the follow. Not quite. And Leilani Mitchell's first to it. They've got the numbers south side. Bit cold. Transition triple goes down. She was already halfway down the court after that.
that left her hand. She knew it was down. She's feeling it today, Beck Cole. Plays with a joy, doesn't she, when she's up and about. She's got 11 points already in this first quarter. Shot clock off, Cherie Kalia on the left arm. Davidson cleans it up. Maybe time for one last heave. No, that'll do it. The Southside Flyers, great first quarter of action, have a slender two-point lead at the first break. State Basketball Centre, Southside with an early lead. And Jordan Canada is off to a quick start as well. In her first game in Melbourne of the season, Nadia Poch. The wingspan, the length of the Southside Flyers making things happen defensively. Laurie Chiswick, it's been fun. Well, to be honest, I thought Melbourne, knowing how outsized they actually are, are really holding their own. They are still going after the boards. They are still competing for them so that Southside's not just getting it their own way of getting a rebound and getting it out and running. I, I'm impressed with Melbourne's endeavor and the way they're attacking the Southside Flyers. Yeah, got out to an eight-point lead at one stage in favor of the Flyers, but Melbourne, to their credit, pulled it right back. We have a ball game. We certainly do, but you just look at the depth of the south side bench and the rotations and the, the variety of positions players can, can, can play. They can be, they can go extra big, they can go a little bit smaller, they can go quick, you know, they just have so many options. It's fun, fun to watch. That is, and the fans have turned out as well to take it in. Here at the State Basketball Centre, second quarter underway. Leilani Mitchell, deflection off Canada. Stays with Ernst. And Russell easily caught that catch and nearly got the shooter's roll. Lily Rattuno, as well, a new boomer, former Sydney Flame. With some burn here at the second quarter. Reed with the hand off to Canada. Davidson, now come the calls of the shot clock. Four to work with. Keely Froling will take it. Reed unattended on the O glass. Too easy, really, for the Boomers. Well, it is. I, I think they should be. The South Side's got to really knuckle down and, and get some blocking out because the Boomers are really attacking and, and you know, going after the boards. That was a great job by Tara Reed. Uh, to get in there and get it, but uh, the South Side need to take care of business in that end. 11 seconds to work with for Froling. And too long. Gee, this South Side D, I mean, hate to harp on it, Laurie, but they've been awesome in that respect. Yeah, that's exactly what you want. If you can get a five second call. Leilani Mitchell. Starting the action for the Flyers. Here's Cole. Great first quarter for her. Ernst dumps it down low. And, oh, Panina Davidson. It's going to be assessed a foul. Mercedes Russell. So tough to handle inside the keyway. Well, if you look, Mercedes Russell is 198 centimetres. Panina Davidson, who's guarding her, is 189 centimetres. So big difference in there. So good recognition by Carly Ernst. Some high-low action. Get it up high for Russell to, to catch it in the air. And uh, then there's not a lot that Davidson can do. That mismatch is going to be there in almost every matchup this season, you'd think. 
to Mercedes Russell. And she goes to one of two, excuse me, splits a pair. And Rotuno. Melbourne searching for their first points the second quarter. Canada, they go under the screen. Not quite on that jumper. Well, Canada's not known to be a great perimeter shooting. She certainly worked on it and improved. She's much more of a driver and a facilitator and is super quick and explosive. Nick Cole absorbs the contact, not quite on the J. Davidson releasing Canada, who spins out of trouble with Grace. Recognizes the open keyway and the floater as well. I'd be saying thanks to Keeley Frawling there. She really kept her player behind her back and, and, and was almost like a screen for, for Canada coming off and being able to achieve that floater. Ernst, nice find to Cole. Looked okay out of the hands. Davidson, Russell at front position. Luckily for the Boomers, it was a long rebound. Canada, great dime and the foul on Matty Rocci. And you can see that that's the strength of Canada is to push the ball. She's so quick. She goes, I mean, we know how quick Maddie Rachi is. She just blew by her then. Billy Froling at the line. That's one, sorry, that's one thing that Chris Lucas talked about. He knows his team doesn't have a great deal of size but he also knows how gritty they are and what hard workers they are. And that's, you know, that's the, the, the rap on Hillman as we talked about. She is a, a, a worker. She's always been undersized in the, in the WNBA. She plays for Atlantic, talked to Paul Gorris about her, and he said, you know, she's just got great effort, great strength, great physicality, and she's just always been undersized. Potch down low to Russell, and not much you can do with your Lily Returno. No. <laughs> Back up by one of the Flyers. Canada around the frolling pick. Mercedes Russell shuts that off very quickly. And here's Dallas Luffridge as well out there defending the ball, making her WNBL debut here tonight. Travel call against Froling. Luffridge rupturing her ACL last October in a preseason game for the Southside Flyers. And great to see her finally out there. Yeah, league. this is big, her first game back, and I'm sure she'll have a little bit of nerves, but once she's out there and playing, she's ready to go. Nicole. Russell in the post. She'll front and fire. Ernst really tapped it to herself. And a foul call against Ernst. Well, they're certainly right now having... Mercedes Russell's as a focus in there, trying to get the ball inside, reverse it, let her seal her player. Maybe there's been a switch and she can, uh, you know, have a mismatch on her. But, but to me, that seems to be a focus right now. Canada calling the shots. Cole closes it off. She's picked up her dribble. Foul call. It might be number two on Carly Ernst. Sideline ball boomers. She was just working really hard at denying her player the ball out on the wing. Must have just held a little bit too much. It's hard to take it. Three minutes gone here in the second quarter. Hillman combines with Jordan Canada. Here's Tara Reid, the Kiwi, nearly on the left hand, poked out by Blitzarves. Favors Canada. Eight seconds for the Boomers. Froling mishandles. <laughs> and Ernst protects the space as it falls out of bounds. I'm not sure what that... That didn't look like basketball. <laughs> <laughs> no, it did not. We'll have another look at it. Froling desperately trying to get there. So Boomers basketball. Canada pulls up in the mid-range. <laughs> Jordan Canada already up to eight points and three dimes. She's really having an impact. Ernst for mid range. She certainly is having a big impact. WNBA guard to our read to the hoop. No pedigree. 
Jordan Canada. Here's Luffridge. Drives to the rack that's come off the bottom of the window. Froling can release. Now it's Hillman. Combining with Canada, she goes to wow. the rack herself and on fire as the Boomers point guard, Jordan Canada. Welcome to the Signet WNBL. Well, against Adelaide, she had a total of six points for the whole game. She certainly exceeded that with 10 points already. Great read. Hesitates up on the right hand and she is on fire here so far in game one of the Michelle Teams Cup. And this time out is brought to you by CTM Sport. The experts in travel management for sport teams with CTM Sport, your team can leave the logistics to our travel specialists and concentrate on their game as part of the renowned CTM group. CTM Sport's travel management is designed to outperform the competition. Visit ctmsport.com.au today. And the Boomers, Laurie Chiswick, well, they've fired back here over the last few minutes. Really impressed with them, and I, I think... We know how much, and I've said it already, how much scoring punch the Flyers have. The question mark has always been, can they play some defense? Because if they could combine the two with their scoring power and play some really disruptive defense, uh, you know, they're, they're going to be tough to stop. But right now, Boomers are just out hustling them and outplaying them. Offensive rebounding numbers as well. The Boomers have 10 yeah. compared to Southside's two. And, and they're, they've got the height on them, so that just shouldn't happen. Absolutely, they have the height and the length to stop that. There's been some times where they've just missed box outs, just simple reads. The one Three thing you can, sorry, Liam, the one thing you can say about the boomers where if you, sometimes the players on the court, you look across and you think, oh, they're all the same height, but that at least it lends itself to they can really switch aggressively. Nadia Poch. Lost court pass, finds Luffridge. Ernst. They're in a bit of a zone. The Boomers just mixing it up. Getting tangled up with Jordan Canada there is Ernst, and will be a foul on the Boomers' guard. Often coming out of a timeout, coaches switch it up, and they even say just for one possession, we'll go a zone, we'll show a zone. And one, it, it mixes it up, but at two, it, it gives the coaches a chance to look at how effective that zone is, but how effective is Beck Cole from the three-point range? Up to 14 points now, a third triple. Unbelievable. It's so good to see. Southside skipper starting her tenure as captain in style, and she pokes it out of bounds, making Blitzards her former teammate work for it. Sarah Blitzovs right now probably just needs to let the game come to her a little bit more. I feel, and, and I, I understand she's playing against her own team. She wants to try and get some points on the board. But I think if she just lets the game come to her, it'll be more effective. Davidson rolling to the bucket. Easy basketball. Easy, effective basketball with Davidson rolling, getting her head up early, looking at her target and finishing. Poch. Picked up her dribble, found Russell on the perimeter. Another pick for Luffridge. Ups against it. Five seconds. Beck Cole, she's had all the answers so far tonight. She'll go again from three. Ernst retrieves it in the corner, tried to flip it out of there, and now the Boomers with an opportunity. Canada will slow it up. Reed gets around one, steps through, not quite. And Southside, see it off. Maybe lucky to get out of that one without conceding there, the Flyers. Beck Cole. Waiting for the right moment. Seven seconds. Laid into the shot clock and Ernst. Back iron on the three ball. Now Blitzarves. Fast break situation. She'll turn and fire around Beck Cole. So Luffridge can reset things for Southside. Davidson nearly got there in the foul call. Second personal on Panina Davidson. And she knew the moment she made that decision to reach. Didn't come off that time and she'll take a seat. Nadia Poch 
What a season she had last year. Not that time on the three. Playing crunch time minutes throughout that grand final series against the Townsville Firepotch as Canada steps into a two. Game sort of hit almost a little flat spot right now. It was so frenetic and up and down and good baskets. And it's Potch driving hard at the hoop. It has the offense slowed up, Laurie. See if Tara Ree can do something about that. No, says Mercedes Russell. Spiked it out of bounds. Block number two of the ball game. See, she sensed the same thing. She sensed they needed to bring something that was going to get this crowd going, and nothing like a great block to do that. It's been a good reintroduction to the Signet WNBL for Mercedes Russell. I'm, re I'm yep. really impressed, Liam, how poised and patient, and what a shot by Sarah Blitzovs, but how poised and patient they are getting the ball through hands, and, and they're not letting, you know, Southside get in their heads at all. They're, they're doing a great job. Ernst. Now trailing by five, the Flyers, after a fast start here. Nice find out to Potch in the perimeter. Dickey chasing it down. Southside retain it. And get a fresh 14 as Jackson and Mitchell re-enter. And we know that Lauren Jackson's on limited minutes getting back into the league and into playing, so... We saw her a little bit in the first quarter, and we'll probably see her for the last two minutes in this second quarter. Potch with a handoff. Dickey <laughs> explodes to a nice look from the mid-range, not that time. It's Ra Reed. Has Hillman in the post, she'll go there. Nice find, and Reed on the cut. Good connection between Reed and Hillman. Really good. That just basic basketball of give and go, cut to the basket, make your pass, cut, expecting to get the ball, expecting to score. Russell with a handoff. Here's Dickey. Hillman was there. It's come off the foot. So you can see the switching action by the Melbourne Boomers. Because of the height, everybody's the same. Blitzoff's exchanged with Hillman, with Frawling, with Reed. Melani Mitchell. Now it's Russell. Long way from home, posting up from Hillman. Nearly on the fadeaway. 90 seconds remains in this first half and finds Reed in transition and drains it. Boomers are on a run here. Ten-point ball game. What a great find. And, and, you know, that was just pushing the ball, seeing the open player. And I feel like Southside right now have just the spark in their defense has gone out. They, they don't have the run in their legs or something, but I'm certainly that's going to have to be addressed at, at halftime because Boomers right now have all the momentum. This time out brought to you by ASC, the Australian Sports Commission and the Australian Institute of Sport recognise the outstanding contribution Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people make to society and sport in Australia. And are proud to support Basketball Australia and this Signet WNBL Indigenous Round. It's a great opportunity to celebrate the power of sport to promote reconciliation, reduce inequality and make sport a positive, welcoming place for everyone. Visit ozsport.gov.au to find out how the ASC and Australian Institute of Sport are enhancing their connection with Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples, communities and cultures, and helping sport across the country to do the same. Indigenous round across round one in the WNBL and in the NBL as well. It was promoted during the week at the Loom Melbourne. And the Southside Flyers jerseys as well, looking terrific, designed by Emma Stenhouse, who's been with or involved in the club for a number of years now, leads cultural sessions as well there. And it is a beautiful looking jersey. Well, it isn't. It's something that uh, Cheryl Chambers talked about is, you know, it represents community and, and culture and, and sisterhood and, and everything has a meaning, all the little circles. And it's, it's great to see them. And I know the players wear them with such pride. Jackson in the painted area. Hillman's there to pull it down. So Jordan Canada. Great first half for her. 
Evans read to her left. She's going to let this shot clock wind right down. Now Froling will turn and fire from three. Potch wrestles it out, and now she's got an open floor ahead of her. Opted not to take on the Boomers defenders. Jackson there fading away, using her size, and didn't go. Reed for Melbourne. Now they can slow it up. Hillman in the post. Goes to work on Jackson. Steps around and the call will go against LJ. Four points, four boards so far this evening for Nas Hillman. I like the aggression that she went at LJ. She had no fear there at all. She was trying to back down the much bigger player, but just used her strength. Her center of gravity was nice and low, did a spin move, and finds herself at the foul line. Hillman, good on the first. Boomers out to an 11-point lead. Well, what surprises me most is Yes, that lead, but the fact that the Flyers have only scored 26 points in, in half a basketball. Um, and we know what scoring power punch they have. Just eight points so far in this second quarter as well for Southside. And the woes continue as Melbourne pull down the rebounds. 22 to 8 reads the second quarter tally. So one last look for the Boomers. Jordan Canada has it. Hillman comes to combine, six seconds. Got to go, Canada will fire and makes it. What a half for the Boomers. Leilani Mitchell can't quite get it off in time. It's not going to count, unfortunately, for the home fans. But 40 plays 26 here at the main break, and the Boomers a dominant second quarter, maybe against the grain after the opening minutes, which Southside looked well in control. And perhaps Laurie Chiswick, perhaps it's... Would you call it a boil over at this point? Oh my goodness, I don't think it's what, uh, uh, not certainly what I expected. And especially after watching Boomers play on uh, Wednesday night against Adelaide, where, you know, they just look like they got a win. It was great, but they had a long ways to go. But I love the way they're playing right now. They're playing as a team. They're, they're moving the ball around. That lady on the screen right there, Jordan Canada, she is really leading the way. But they look like they've played together for a long time. And, and, and Southside, conversely, other than Beck Cole, who has been firing and on fire with 14 points, well, they look a bit disjointed and look like they need to really ramp up their defense a bit. Yeah, Beck Cole's got 14 of their 26 points for Southside. Blitzarv starting off life as a boomer in style here so far in round one. And Hillman and Tara Reid linking up there on that occasion. I'm just surprised that Southside haven't taken advantage of their height the way they're, there's there's mismatches all over the court so you know send those mismatches down low and and take advantage of it but that hasn't been the situation yeah look at the rebounding numbers reflecting what you're saying Laurie both in total rebounds and the offensive numbers just getting to the spots where the Flyers aren't and coming up with second chance positions well to me offensive rebounds is all about effort you know that's just an effort thing to go after the boards and and it also shows that the Flyers really aren't finding a body and blocking out. Well, it's Jordan Canada who leads the way for the Boomers with 12 points and six assists as well in that first half. Simply a great half for her. Niles Hillman was good. Tara Reid, seven points. And Blitzarms as well has seven. Stick around. Second half not far away here. This is going to be a fascinating game one in the Michelle Timms Cup. The Flyers came in. Starting off so strongly. And you mentioned as well the Wednesday night game, Laurie. Of course, Chris Lucas mentioned in the post game. The offense was, you know, a little bit choppy, if you like. They only had, I think, the 26 points um, in the first half. But you'd expect that with a new team. But what they did do so well was the defense. And we've seen that again here so far today. Well, exactly. And Chris Lucas's teams are always fantastic defenders. And in fact, last year they were the second best defensive team in the competition. So that... That to hold the Flyers to 26 points is a, is a great, great result. But it's all about the effort and the poise and the patience for the Boomers. They are playing fantastic team basketball. And then remember, they're without their star guards. There's a great energy in the arena here on your Saturday Night Hoops at the State Basketball Centre. Stick around, the Boomers lead by 14.
maximum power you've created to explode out on your first dribble. Okay, we've got two more. One. Sometimes as women, we look for perfection as opposed to execution. The work ethic is important when the players are 40 years younger than you. Treaty negotiations between our people and the Victorian government are happening soon. The time has come to put our people in the driver's seat. A treaty that celebrates and respects our culture. A treaty that listens to our elders. A treaty that provides truth-telling, better education, jobs, jobs, housing, health and justice for our kids. Authorised by Amy Rust, First Peoples Assembly of Victoria, 48 Cambridge Street, Collingwood, Victoria. Hello, Australia. Want to go for a ride? A summer heat wave has arrived. This is it. This is what you've been waiting for. Four spicy nights a week. It's open season. It's Love Island. Be afraid, boys. The power has shifted. <gasps> the girls are in charge. What the hell? What the hell? Surprise! The steamy villain era has arrived. New Love Island. New episodes drop Monday to Thursday on Nine Now. So we're here today at the Loom in Melbourne, checking out all of the wonderful artists and the artwork that's displayed here, and celebrating the opening round of the WNBL, which also happens to be the Indigenous round. So come have a look at some of the artwork. It's interesting just to, you know, get a little glimpse of the stories um, and the inspiration between, behind the artwork. This one's nice. This is one I would have in my house. This is my first time ever today being at the Loom and this space is just incredible. You know, as a credit to all the Indigenous artists out there who put in such hard work. Yeah, looking forward to playing an Indigenous round um, and wearing the Indigenous jersey. That's something that I always find super interesting. As with all the other paintings here, all Indigenous artwork has a story behind it. You can't be what you can't see. To have representation and then know that, um, yeah, our mob are watching um, and they're seeing our culture being celebrated. Being a proud Indigenous woman, my job is not only to go out and play basketball and perform to the best of my abilities, but to inspire the youth and give them something to dream for and hope for. I know I said the other one was my favourite, but I really like this one too. <laughs> I'm really proud to represent my family and share my culture with my teammates. That's really important for me so everyone gets to learn something and feel more connected to where they're playing. It's probably the one time of the year that I get the goosebumps out on the court. I get really excited and just to, to see the celebration pre-game, to then be involved in these elite games as well, it's the time of the year I really look forward to, um, to, to stand out there and know that I'm representing my culture as well, uh, as long as the players that are out on the court with me. Hi, my name's Christy.
Wilson, long range shot from the car park. And Alex Wilson now starting to light things up. Davo Hickey upstairs. Ooh, love it. He's been exceptional. Big hit from Abby Cabillo. Australia, take, take your, your seats. You played the game well, you strategised throughout the whole series. For the biggest night of television. We have done everything to create a beautiful home. This year. Very bizarre, people lining up. It's like Taylor Swift's here. The block grand finale auction. Everybody wants you to make money. This is the night. Five glorious block stunners go under the hammer. Going, going, going! It's sold, sold, sold! Who? I cannot wait to show Australia. Will. We know what we're capable of. Not only on the court, but off the court, obviously we know what she brings. Yeah, you could hear the ovation from the crowd. So excited to have her back, Lauren Jackson. Here we go. Third quarter on the way. Boomers basketball. And here is Jordan Canada. Southside flyers in defense. Doesn't matter. Tara Reed makes the three. Well, she's up to 10 points now, and, and uh, it's a real nice distribution of scores for the Boomers. It's, yes, re, uh, Canada has the is top scoring, but that's where I'd like to see Mercedes Russells get the ball inside there. Take advantage of her height. She's such a great finisher in there. It is such a mismatch. And you're right, Laurie. They've done a reasonable job, the Boomers, of keeping her out of those positions so far in the ball game. As long rebound sees Froling do just enough. Reed in the corner. Seven seconds. Hillman in the post. Got to make her move. Got Russell defending. Blitzarves from the free throw line. And Russell will pull it down. Here's Rochi. Almost going to go herself, is she? And no bucket, says the ref. Foul came first. Okay. 
And that goes on Nas Hillman, her third personal. That was a good push by Maddie Rachi, and, and she needs to, that the Flyers need that. They need to get that energy back into the game. They need to push the ball. They got players that can run the lane. Cole inside. Canada was there, tangled up with Rachi. So she's got two personals as well. Rachi, the inbounds play. Cole who was terrific in that first quarter. Poch came in to crash the glass. And Cole from out of bounds. And I think she didn't establish herself properly inbounds. Boomer's ball. I liked Maddie Rachi trying to post up on, uh, on Canada in that last play before the out of bounds. It's not often Rachi could do that. Here's Hillman. Blitzarves. Keely Froling, nice look down low, and the Boomers well drawn up set and finished off by Nas Hillman. So Hillman to the line for one more. She top scored with 14 points on Wednesday in the season opener versus Adelaide. Even scoring spread in that one. Again, her work rate is phenomenal on and off the ball and what she's doing. And I know we, we, we also know she's a really good defender as well. 17 point lead to the Boomers. It just keeps creeping up slowly. Just putting Southside away at this stage is inside to Russell. And that's how you use the mismatch. Absolutely. Nice ball reversal, good seal. Nothing they can do once the ball's inside and it's just a one on one situation. Jordan Canada. Now Hillman couldn't handle it. Froling was there. Last touch by Froling. To the southeast Melbourne Phoenix boys as well down there on the baseline. Coming to support the Flyers. Of course, a partnership developing there between those two clubs. Situated at the State Basketball Centre. Here's Mercedes Russell. Canada with the steal. Now to Ra Reid. Transition three. Wow. She is draining them from that spot in particular. And you could tell Canada was just waiting for her out of the corner of her eye to catch up to make that pass a nice catch and shoot in rhythm. Rochi as Dickey at the perimeter goes herself on the right hand, not that time. Releasing Canada. Puts it behind her back. No. What a dime to read. No way. What a great pass. Eyes in the back of her head. Jordan counted an unbelievable timeout on the floor, 20-point ball game. Let's have another look at that one, Laurie. Oh, just a nice little pass over her shoulder to the cutting Tara Reed. That is team basketball. That is great court vision from Canada. The Boomers, they are all smiles at the moment. Didn't Tara Reed love it? Timeout, 20-point lead. And this one brought to you by Ford Aussie Hoops, whether your little one is already shooting hoops in the backyard or simply looking to get out there and give basketball a go. The Aussie Hoops program is the perfect way to kickstart their basketball journey. Ford Aussie Hoops is the perfect introduction to the world of basketball for kids aged 5 to 10 years. Register today at aussiehoops.basketball. Monique Conti as well, pictured there. At the huddle, not in uniform today, of course, the AFLW season will just be finishing up shortly for her Richmond team, and she will join the squad in a matter of weeks, and what an inclusion that'll be. Defensive menace coming off the pine in the backcourt. Monique Conti. From Southside, they've got a mountain of work to get themselves back into this, Laurie. Well, they do. I mean, there's a lot of game left, but they need to make some adjustments, and they need to start focusing on their defense. So Russell, this avenue has worked on occasions. Now to Cole. Wants the screen from her big. Now four seconds. Rochi's got to go. What space in the mid-range. So something out of nothing for the Flyers. Oh, they've caught him off guard and Poch from nowhere denies. And here's Rochi off to the races. Maybe that'll give him a little bit of oomph, a little bit of inspiration. Poch thought about the three. Now she's going to drive herself, Nadia Poch. Ernst on the follow. More like it from Southside. 
That'll bring the crowd into it as well. Two consecutive baskets, two consecutive stops. Had some big time denials this evening, Southside. Reed. Now eight seconds, Hillman rips it, drives baseline, spins back into the lane. It was a nice looking move, but just wouldn't go down. Southside flies ball. So Potts will inbounds. She's got two blocks, five rebounds. Nadia Potts so far. Here's Rochi. It's tangled up with Canada. Reed comes in to assist. That one on Reed. Number three on her. Now the leading scorer in the ball game as well, Tara Reed with 15. Nice read to Nadia Potch, who fumbled it here. Here's Penina Davidson. Now Froling and Ernst in the post. Goes to work. Great defense from Ernst. Another block for the Flyers. It is great defense. It, you know, she didn't foul. She kept her hands straight. She went for the block. As Rochi open. Canada can slow it up for Melbourne. So Jordan Canada will call the shots. They are in control here, the Boomers, in no rush. Reed. Blitzars will fire for three. And Poch does well, but hitting the deck. So Froling comes in and ties it up for a jump ball. Possession arrow favoring the Flyers. I feel like Sarah needs to get herself involved in the game in other, other ways than just trying to score. So whether that's coming up with some key boards, whether that's being a great facilitator or passing or whatever, but she just hasn't found her rhythm scoring. So if that's the case and you're contributing, you, you need to find another way to do that. Rochi. Potch in the perimeter, inside to Cole. Tries to create some space, she has. Count it, one to come at the line. First points of the second half for Beck Cole. Now 16 to her name. That's a spark that they could be needing. Well, they've reeled off a 6-0 run here, Southside. So bit by bit. Well, it's really important that the Boomers maintain their composure through this mini run. We know that basketball is a series of runs, series of momentum swings, and you just have to be able to play through them. 13-point ball game. Blitz offs. She takes it on and Potch again. She's got her third denial. Maybe more what you were talking about there, Laurie Blitzarfs, taking matters into her own hands. Well, that's right. And you know, you know, her teammates know her well and know that if she's going to drive, she might not be in a passing situation. But you, you've just got to play a little bit more smartly. So foul call. And it goes against the Boomers. Chris Lucas can't believe it. Let's look at what happened here as Russell came in. So personal foul, I believe it's gone on Tara Reed, which will be number four in the ball game. She's going to remain out there. Leilani Mitchell reinserted into the fray. Cole, this one's turned into almost a bit of a chess match here, Laurie, as Ernst just throws it up. Yeah. Not sure she knew that she was that wide open. There's been a bit of a miscommunication on defense and two players, players went away from her, left her wide open. They look like a team that's playing their first game of the season so far, Southside. New faces. Just a little bit disjointed since the opening moments. It was 14-8 very early on for Southside and the buckets were falling with ease. And then it was a 32 to 12 close to the first half for Melbourne. Blitzarfs. 
Kicks it over to Froling, and Ernst was there. Confident that it's Southside ball, but it's going to stay with Melbourne. Liam, have you ever not seen a player point in the direction they think it's that their <laughs> ball? You, you, you usually see 10 players pointing in different directions when there's a questionable call. It's a great point. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not too much stock you can place in it. Here's Jordan Canada. <laughs> Leilani Mitchell slows her up out to Blitzars and can't find the rim. Hasn't been a night so far, Sarah Blitzars. Well, she's two from 12 right now, and that's when I'm saying it. You know, if your outside shot's not working, or you find other ways to get involved in the game. Had a 40-point outburst last season as well in a south side uniform as Beck Cole makes it rain. So she's getting herself back involved in this game, and 17 now. In fact, make it 20 for Beck Cole. Fourth triple. And it's a 10-0 run for Southside. Timeout on the floor. Flyers skipper getting the job done here. And they keep Southside in it. Well, they certainly do, and, and we know that they're capable of doing that, piling on points very quickly. So the Boomers just can't lose their nerve right now. They need to keep doing what they did to get here at this point, and that was play team basketball, set some screens, get, test the Southside's defense, and then make sure defensively for them they are locking down as well. Indigenous round is being supported by the First Peoples Assembly of Victoria, which is negotiating the country's first treaty. If you are an Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islander person in or from Victoria, register with the Assembly today to have your say and help decide the next steps of the journey. For more information, visit www.firstpeoplesvic.org. Southside out of the timeout. Back within 10. And you thought for a second there, maybe the Boomers were on their way to a blowout win. So much time remaining. So much time. They really need to hold their nerve. Steady the ship here. And Southside, well, they just want to ride on the back of the wave that the fans are creating. They're vocal, they're loud. They've got the momentum right now. Canada. Poch defending Blitz Arves. Done a terrific job of that so far. Cherie Kalia finds Davidson at the top of the keyway. That could be the steadying basket that they needed. Mitchell has Poch on the wing. She's going to turn and fire the three, Nadia Poch. She's isn't, done everything defensively. Isn't she just a great young player to watch and, and to see her development and her growth? It's so exciting. Going to be a player in Australian circles we talk about for a long time as Keely Froling, the corner triple, converts one back for Melbourne. All right, we'll see if uh, Southside shoot a three now and uh, answer again. Cole tangled up with Canada. Mitchell, she'll do just that and nearly drains it. Cole's there again. This time it's the Flyers who are unattended. Blitzarves pokes at it. Six seconds. Cole and Carly Ernst inside the painted area. Two shots to come for Ernst. Just the fourth trip to the charity stripe of the game for the Flyers. I feel like Carly Ernst has, has added that to her game. You would always see Carly set a screen, pick and pop, because she's a great three-point shooter. But now to see that she rolls, she gets inside, she tries to, you know, finish with physicality, it's, it's really good to see. And takes care of business on the line, as all good shooters do. And Kalia will run point. Blitzarves, Canada, cutting off ball. Davidson provides the pick. Again, space to fire, not quite. Mitchell assessing. Now forward via Poch. Blitzarves there. What does Poch do here? It's a travel. A blow for the Flyers, but they're back within single figures. Lady Rochi will replace her. Lauren Jackson back in the game, replacing Mercedes Russells. First minutes of the second half for LJ. 
Here's Kalia. Rolling, hand off to Blitzarves. What action can they find here? The Boomers denied by Carly Ernst. It is a block party tonight for Southside. And that just shows their size and their length that they could do that. Made it look easy, disposed of Rolling, who thought there might have been some treatment on the way through. All clean to my eye. Nine seconds for Canada. Now Froling has, oh, finds Keely Froling and coming across late was Jackson and Keely Froling wanted the call. She'll get it and one opportunity. Well, that was just great, uh, uh, that great little pocket pass by, by Canada and then the, the endeavor of Froling just to get her second rebound and, and finish off that shot in an and one. And that basket can't be underestimated. That was tough in there. She was against much taller opponents, so... Week in and week out, we know she plays that way and she plays against those bigger players, but it's always so great to see. Not quite. Kalia nearly first to it. Ernst paddled it out, but no further than Keely Froling. Second possession, Melbourne. And Davidson entry, entry pass was wayward. Kalia up in the grill of Rochi. Ninety seconds remain here in the third quarter. Cole, an offensive foul against Jackson. Just extended her arms a little bit on that screen as she came in there. So Kalia. Ball back for the Boomers, goes against Rochi. Southside lead the third quarter, 19 to 16. We know what a feisty defender Maddie Rachi is, and in that instance, she just got a little bit too feisty. Canada, throwing wide open, nearly banked it in. Cole tried to spike it out to Ernst, but Kalia intercepts. Driving on her left, Cherie Kalia, that's an offensive foul. Easy call for the referee. And that's the tenacity of Maddie Rachi that you see there. She just gets under the skin of, of players that she's defending. So Rachi. Running point here, four assists so far today. Splits through Davidson, splits through them all. Rachi with the easy lay-in. Two slick up top. And it's back to a single-digit game. Canada wants the movement. Nine seconds. Panina Davidson's there. Ops against the screen. Nice find. Froling missing on the lay-in. Somehow ended up in her lap, and Leilani Mitchell has it. Shot clock off. They can go quick here, the Flyers. Rochi down low. Extra pass out to Beck Cole. Mitchell's got eight seconds to work with. This would really get the crowd involved at the State Basketball Centre. And Blitzarves on, de on the defensive glass. Nine-point ball game at the end of three. Melbourne Boomers 56, Southside 47. And out by 20 at one stage, Laurie Chiswick, the Boomers. But Southside have made a game of it. Well, certainly Southside scored a lot of points in that, in that the 21 points in that quarter compared to the Boomers 16. And for a while there, it just, it felt like a bit of a, a grind. There were blocks at both ends. There was Carly Ertz shooting that, not realizing she had that much time. But the reality is, is that the Flyers now have set themselves into a position where this is a very, very winnable game, a nine point margin with the momentum going into this last quarter. It is absolutely in the balance. Nadia Posh has been terrific. Three blocks to her name and three as well in that third quarter to top it off and Keely Froling wasn't she active and involved towards the end there always hustling hard on the O-glass she's got six of them Keely Froling well Keely Froling was monstrous and I think there's a few shots there that she would 
you know, she she would be disappointed that she missed. Um, you know, she just worked so hard. She worked so hard off the ball to get position, to make position, um, that she wants to make sure she's rewarding herself every time, which she does most of the times. But she was instrumental in that uh, quarter to, to keep the score line ticking over for the Boomers. Rebounding numbers, 17 offensive rebounds for the Melbourne Boomers following a reason why. So 10 minutes to come here. Will it go down the stretch? I just want to make a point of talking about the Boomers' free throws. They're six for eight right now, which is a, a good percentage. And we always know that if it comes down to the to the very crucial end of a game, free throws can mean everything. And on the other night against Adelaide, they shot a, a, a very poor 56.7%. So it's good to see that they're shooting more foul shots now. They're better at it uh, because that can win or lose you a game, come a close game at the end. Absolutely. They can, shooting at a decent clip so far today. Jackson will start the fourth quarter. Melbourne basketball. Great crowd here for your home opener for Southside. And Cherie Kalia for the Boomers. Poch denying Froling in the post. He's blitz off short again. It's just not the shot for her to take right early in the offense. Nice one-touch pass from Jackson. She retrieves it back in the post, turns and drains it. That's that muscle memory. Get it in the block. Turn, shoot over the smaller opponent, Sarah Blitzovs. Canada. Back out there in the fourth. That's Hillman as well. And Jackson defending it. Eight seconds for Jordan Canada to work with. Kick out, Cherie Kalia will go that's, and makes the three ball. That's what she's known for. Her three-point shooting is elite. Puts it back out to a double-figure ball game. Leilani Mitchell. Russell battling in the post with Kalia. Mismatch if they can get to it. Kalia doing well in the end. And a turnover. We weren't able to utilize the mismatch. In comes Tara Reed, leading scorer for Melbourne with 15. Canada. It's the outside crowd getting involved here at their new home. Reed around the screen, offensive foul. I think Keely Froling moved her feet, and that'll be number two on her. Yeah, just as. Ta Ta Tahara Reed was using that screen. She just moved her hips a little bit. Uh, good call by the referee. Take foul. So we'll confirm in the moment who it's in a moment who it's against. Chris Lucas confused as well. A little bit of talk back, I think, from the Boomers has cost them. Rochi will take the three throw. Might have pointed at Nas Hillman, but regardless, Southside basketball back within nine. Potch will take it. Rochi, can they bring this crowd alive? Will themselves back into this one. Potch got the length on Canada. Absolutely what they need to be doing. Check out the mismatches. Work it till you get switches and then pump it inside and go to work. Canada. As Kalia tried to thread the needle to Reed. Desperately lunging to get there and it stays with the Boomers. Get another look at it in just a moment. So 11 seconds to work with for Melbourne. Out to Hillman. Has Froling in the post. Ops for a point guard. Another two-man action. Oh, what a fake and Euro step from Canada. Didn't matter. Southside have the stop. Releasing Rochi. Potch ahead. They'll have to slow it up here, you'd think. Out to Jackson. She'll fire from the top. Just strong. That would have brought the house down, Laurie. Oh, it would have. And the fact that Mercedes Russell, she can just sometimes plant herself in the middle of the key 
and change shots, be that defender, that shot blocker. Canada steps into another three. Russell easily dealt with. Such size they've got out there on the floor at the moment. Releasing Russell, who just rolls to the hoop. Good luck getting in the way of that. Five-point ball game. It was a 20-point lead at one stage for Melbourne. Hillman. Canada probing. Has Russell there. Can't find an angle at the bucket. Throwing. Malani Mitchell has caused the turnover. Potch penetrates. Fakes. No score. Yeah, looked like she just dragged that foot before she did her step through. So Melbourne basketball, here's another look at it. Yeah, you can see it clearly. Hesitated. Caught the defender off guard. Committed the travel boomers ball. Three minutes gone here in this fourth quarter. Canada kicks it out for Hillman for the mid-range two. Throwing a second look. Jordan Canada, another late shot clock situation. What can she do here? Oh, loses Mercedes Russell. Says, see you later, and Hillman on the follow. <laughs> Unfortunately, she couldn't drop it for the Boomers. One of the things that has been noted for Canada, Jordan Canada, duh, is her expertise at crossing over. And I tell you what, we have seen some fine examples of that in today's game. She left the postcode, didn't she, Mercedes <laughs> Russell? Wow, that had dropped. It would have been one of the plays of the rounds. It's Hillman at the line. And she's good on the first. Well, that's one of the important foul shots that we talked about. Done their job so far today. Seven point game. So Hillman's into double figures. Been a really defensive game so far. Tough for both sides to score here. Ernst finds Cole. Extra pass, Russell on the end of it, Hillman battling, and Russell on the hook. I feel like Mercedes Russell has just come to life this last quarter. She's gone, okay, we got to do something here. I got to use my size. Here's Reed. She's been threatening throughout the contest. Oh, that's a great seal and position hold from Nas Hillman. And a great high low action, a great pass from Sarah Blitzovs. That's what we need her doing. If she's not scoring, get involved other ways. Watchy. Ernst there as well. Nice find to Mercedes Russell, and she is having an influence. Now 13 and 6 for Russell. Back to a five point game. He managed the seven points so far in this period, the Boomers. Latuno getting some big minutes here in the fourth quarter and makes it over the outstretched arm of Russell. Potch ahead of the play, going quickly to the Flyers. And she's got two of the line. I like that when you can go in the five minute mark left in the game and you're still able to get a great outlet. Let's have somebody like Potch run the floor and create a, an offensive transition. It's a great option to release. Money of Potch. Just off on the first. Had a great game so far this evening. Fascinating to see how she develops in this Signet WNBL season. Still so young, as we know. And ha imagine having the role models of Mercedes Russell's, uh, Russell, um, Lauren Jackson, Carly Ernst, and I know she's more of a guard, but just their presence on the court. And straight away, coming up with the steal on cue. Rochi wanted the foul call, won't get it. Just the wrong decision there. Needed to pass it into Potch, I thought. That's a missed opportunity, really, for the Flyers. There's Rituno. So Blitzar's just happy to slow it up here. Wants to set the right action. Here's Hillman. Let's come off Russell. Uses that length. Now Cole. 
in the open floor. Beck Cole back within two possessions. You'd have to say Beck Cole is playing a captain's role tonight. Yeah, 22 points, 50% from the field. Beck Cole and Tara Reid has drawn the foul. Back to the three throw line they go. The Boomers, where they're 80% so far this evening. They really need these free throws to, to keep the score line, to keep it ticking over. Because the Flyers, each possession, are looking very dangerous. It's got that feeling about it, doesn't it? As Reed making on the first, the crowd screaming in her ear. What an addition she's been through round one for the Melbourne Boomers, the New Zealander. Making on the second. And Rochi has Rituno defending the rock. Hillman comes to meet the ball. Here's Cole. Russell with the screen. She'll pull up in the mid-range. Russell was there. Canada hit the deck. Now Potch, and she had a foot out of bounds. Those are the little mistakes you want to eliminate in a close game. Give yourself every opportunity to have that possession and, and you know, give yourself a chance to score. Just the 12th turnover of the game for Southside, but it has feel like, felt like they've left some points on the board in this fourth quarter with just little errors like that. It's been a great game, though. Uh, you know, both teams have had their moments. Both teams have shared different times of momentum. Two great clubs here at the State Basketball Centre. Game one of the Michelle Tims Cup, and it is delivered so far. Reed met at the apex by the Flyers. Here's Rochi. Now Cole quickly gets down the other end to set up for the three. Great game for Beck Cole. We'll chat things over in the timeout. And the scoring tally just keeps on ticking over for the skipper. Nice little screen by Carly Ernst to keep the defense from closing out. But Beck Cole is just doing it. Doing it for her team as the captain, as their first game. First game of the Michelle Timms Cup. To celebrate in Indigenous round across round one, the WNBL and the NBL are hosting a special basketball community event at the Loom Melbourne this Sunday afternoon. Players from the Flyers, Melbourne Boomers and Melbourne United of the NBL will be there to sign autographs and take photos. Don't miss out. Secure your tickets now. Visit the Loom Melbourne's website to get involved. That is going to be a terrific opportunity to meet the stars of both these teams here playing tonight and we have a one possession ball game Laurie off the back of that Beck Cole three. Wow <laughs> who would have thought that when they were up by 20 a little you know in the third quarter um, great signs of a, a, a great team when a, a, you are down by that and you can come back and make a game of it and we knew that the Flyers have that personnel they have that experience so it could go any way you know Melbourne really have to hold their nerve right now. Three out, three minutes, 41 seconds is a long time. Yeah, absolutely. The time for protecting the lead has diminished for the Boomers. It's game on here. They can't go negative. They can't, they can't. Three points isn't enough of a lead to protect with that much time left. You still have to stay positive offensively and aggressive defensively. So Canada, they need to draw up a bucket here, the Boomers. Reed working hard to get open. Frolling with the pick. Now finds Hillman at the top. Rituno. Some crunch time minutes for the youngster. Nice find down low to Hillman who hesitates, gets the Flyers off their feet and draws the foul. Cole and Mercedes Russell were there. Yeah, that was just a nice little pump fake by Hillman just to get them in the air and then was able to not finish the shot, but at least she drew the foul. Because there were some players there ready to block that shot. As we've seen many a time throughout the evening as well. Hillman just rattles home. 13 on the evening. 
Haas Hillman splits a pad. Just keeping their noses in front, the Boomers. So Leilani Mitchell. Blitzard comes up to meet the ball. Here's Beck Cole. Tried to find Russell. Coming across to help was Canada. Stays with Southside. Three minutes remain here on your Saturday Night Hoops for the Signet WNBL. Two possession ball game. Rochi got open on Canada. And nearly missed on the lay-in. Got there in the end. Canada. A point guard battle in shoes over the final minutes. Here's Reed. Drew on the foul first. Looks to be on Mitchell. And approaching the bonus as well are the Boomers. Charlie Ernst will take a break. Opting for a smaller lineup at the moment, the Flyers outside of Russell. Canada. Looking for that entry partial. Go herself, Jordan. Oh. Canada, how has she made that? She was so indecisive. She wanted to pass it. None of her teammates were open. She had to take it. And look at the result. Foul call on Leilani Mitchell. Rose up over the top. And one to come at the three throw line. Will she step up? In the big moments, Jordan Canada. She's been terrific this evening for Melbourne. Interestingly enough, her first points of the second half for Canada. Also got the 10 dimes. Double-double, if you don't mind. Potch. Well, they're certainly looking to try and getting it into Russell. Now she'll provide the pick. Here's Rochi. Nas Hillman, that's a foul call. Boomer's bench exuberant at the thought of a block. They won't get it. So we head back to the charity stripe. I have to say, though, when it's a close game and, uh, you know, only two minutes to go, it's not such a, not that you want to foul the shooter there, but if, in fact, you have to foul at the end of the game and you have to use up fouls, sometimes that can be a bit of a waste. So both teams are inching forward to being in the bonus situation. Watch he takes care of business. Canada steering the ship home for Melbourne. Call here off the ball. And Carly Ernst. Number four on her, Ernst, and we are in the bonus, so the Boomers will take it via Keely Froling. Two eleven. And in a two-possession game, that is a world of time, Laurie Chizik. Well, it certainly is, and that's... Man, we've talked about the foul shooting, and, and both teams at either end have made some crucial shots, and these last two minutes, we're going to see more. Rollins good on the first. This to make it a double-double on her evening. Seven rebounds coming offensively. And Nas Hillman on the follow. This a big second look for the Boomers. Can they extend this five-point buffer? Canada uh, on the cross. Lost it momentarily. Three seconds. Hillman's got a heave from long range. And over the glass. Ernst will clean it up. Oh, will she? Tara Reid using the length. Extra possessions just killing the Flyers at the moment. So call here from the ref. Flyers... Bit of confusion. Boomers, I think, have come up with it. Well, they have, and I'm not sure why there was the stoppage. Not sure myself. We'll get some confirmation in just a moment, but they've wiped off an extra 30 or maybe 40 seconds here, Laurie, just from creating extra possessions. And Canada, again, in no rush. They have the upper hand at the moment. The well, Boomers. they do. They need to manage the clock. They can't go negative, but they need to use the clock just as they've done. 
And a foul call as well. And a good decision by the Boomers at the end of a shot clock to penetrate because they're in foul trouble, the Southside Flowers, so they're going to go to the line if they do get fouled. And that's what you want to do, end of that shot clock, get yourself to the rim. They have handled this late game situation so far at least very well, the Boomers. Great evening for Tara Reid. Long on that free throw. So Hillman's got four as well for the Boomers. Wonder watch if we do happen to get an OT. Surely not OT in round one, Liam. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. Here's Rochi. And a foul call against Jordan Canada this time. So next call will be, we'll see the Flyers hand to the line in the bonus. Rochi on the inbounds. Can they find Russell down low in the post? Here's Beck Cole. She's got 25. Gets around Blitzarves. Not that time in Canada now. Boomers can use the clock here, take off a good 20 seconds. And here's the hand you wanted in as well for Melbourne. And such control of the game. Jordan Canada kicks it out. That's a great look for Blitzarves. Gilman there, second chance. Carly Earns travel. I thought for a moment it was going to be 5,000 out for Carly Ernst. With a travel call against Hillman. So time out on the floor, six point ball game. There it is again. And <laughs> Hillman knew as soon as she did it, she should have gone up strongly. She just was of two minds as to what to do. And good job by Carly Ernst there to, to be in that vicinity and make her in that indecisive. What do the Flyers draw up here, Laurie? Six-point ball game. Do you go the three? So think, much time. I think you have to go. Either you 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 go. A, either way, it's a two possession. They need two threes. So I think they need to come up with a three-point play. Obviously, if that doesn't work, then they need to just hopefully get an O board and put it back. But either way, if they get a two-point play, it's still a two possession game. So really, I'd be drawing up a three-point play right now. Either that or a really quick two-point hesitation, you know, get right to the basket and try and get a two-point shot straight away. They can hit, send them straight to the line as well if they need in the bonus of the Boomers. There's still enough time left that if they make a three, they don't need to do any fouling whatsoever. They need to just play solid defense, get possession again. So here we go. A square, 60 seconds remains. How exciting for our first round in the Signic WNBL that we've got this close game between these two rivals. It's been a terrific game so far. Hand off to Rochi. So much at stake. Game one of the Michelle Tims Cup as well. The Flyers took it home last year. So that was a really good result for the Flyers. There was only two seconds, virtually two seconds taken off the clock. And Mal Maddie Rochi finds herself at the line now for two shots. Making on the first. Watchy's four of four from the line so far. So back within four. Canada trying to get open. And the foul call goes against Canada. You could see her try to get free. And just the follow through is what gives it away, I think. And well, doesn't I, Maddie Rochi love it? I have to say Maddie Rochi is a master at that. Um, you know, being up and in and, and, and then throwing her arms. And, and she got the call. And Flyers have the ball now. Four-point game. A bit of a pest, do you think? In an endearing way. <laughs> well, I did say she was feisty. And uh, yes, great if she's on your team. Really annoying if she's on the opposition. Well and said. doing that to you. Well said, Laurie. They've got the basketball and importantly didn't lose any time off the clock. Huge from the vice captain. Here's Beck Cole inside the keyway. Reed doesn't want to give away the foul. It won't go down. Russell, second look. Somehow finds Cole. She'll let it fly. 
Long rebound, and Nas Hillman has it. Now Kalia. And a foul call against Rochi. So Kalia will have two at the line. Gee, that was chaos. Somehow, Beck Cole nearly hit the floor. Next thing you know, she's got she's a look got at three. three. I know. And a good look, too. And she's been hitting them all night. That she has. How the game can swing. He thought for a moment the Flyers were about to be back with him, too. Yeah. And listen to that noise. And Kalia misses on the first. It is deafening here at the State Basketball Centre. And oh, of two, oh, Hillman, though. What a board for Hillman. Second chance has been huge in the fourth for the Boomers. Kalia fumbles. Potch. No, it's going to be a foul call. And you can see Killy Frawling just saying, settle down, settle down. So they need a steady head here at the Melbourne Boomers. And they won't get it via Jordan Canada because... That last offensive foul against her, that's number five in the ball game. A massive blow for the Boomers. She's been probably the best player on the floor, 15 and 10. There you go. Third time lucky for Sharika Kalia. What a big role she's had to play to step in this big situation with Canada fouled out. And that time, completely unfazed. Back out to a six-point game. 35.6 is the equation. Southside, they're on the way back, but the last 25 seconds, it remains the same margin. Boomer's well and truly in the box seat, and Cheryl chambers Laurie is back to the drawing board. Well, she'd have to draw up a three-point play now, and when that was... When they do that, when they get that... If they don't get it within the sort of the 10 seconds, they're going to have to foul because the Boomers then can just use the clock. They can just play and work it around because... And I would imagine in this situation, Cheryl will advance the ball, so she'll have 14 seconds on the shot clock. We'll see in just a moment. Ed Cole, top scorer today, the skipper, the new skipper for the Southside Flyers. Great you, opening to her season. Well, you just expected, as you said, she was on the ground, and next thing she was open for a three, and the way she's been shooting the ball, you just expected it to go in. Yeah, great. It's surprising not to see that last one go down. You felt the crowd behind it. Maybe it would. They have advanced the ball, as you mentioned, Laurie. 14 to work with for Rocci. Into Mercedes Russell. Now Cole off the handoff. Eight seconds. Rochi assessing on the perimeter. Got to make her move. Got the shot away. Nearly went down. Hillman on the rebound. They've got to foul the Flyers, you'd think. They get it out of there. Blitz arcs. Just precious time disappearing for Southside. It's got to be a play at the ball. They decided they must not be fouling. So Blitz arcs. There it is. Poch makes the call. They lost close to 20 seconds, though, in the process. Yeah, I'm not sure why they didn't foul there. You, if you're going to stop the clock, you don't want to wait and let the clock tick down and then stop it. Blitzarves will have it in this. What, a, what an amazing boil-over win for the Melbourne Boomers. They can start their season two and zip without some of their crucial guard depth. Christy Wallace, Monique Conti. So Blitzarves makes the second, and that is an important free throw. Seven points the difference. Cole will let it fly, and the Melbourne Boomers have got it done in game one of the Michelle Teams Cup to the tune of seven points. What a performance from Chris Lucas's team, and they start 2-0 undefeated in the Signet WNBL season. Well, I think Chris would have, you know, looked at this fixture way back when and gone, I'll be happy if I split that first weekend and to come away with two wins against the very, very potent Southside Flyers and a road win against uh, Adelaide. That team will be wrapped with the results. It felt like to me they almost controlled the pace down the stretch as well. This Southside Flyers team loved to get out and run. So dangerous, you know, causing deflections, turnovers and getting out in the fast break. 
but the Boomers just played a slow and controlled game down the stretch. Well, I thought for a while there that the, the, the Flyers certainly had the momentum. They got a couple of threes, they had some fast breaks, and you could just feel them coming. But to the Boomers' credit, they didn't crumble. They didn't go into a shell and go negative. They sort of got themselves through that momentum. And then, as you said, just really steadied the ship. You know, they did what they had to do to get that win. And, uh, you know, Jordan Canada was sensational, as was Reed. Uh, if you look across the scoreboard, it was a real team effort from them. It was. Jordan Canada was terrific. A double, double, 15 points, 10 assists. And Terrell Reed as well. Yeah, she was fantastic. 6 of 11, 18 points. Leading scorer in the game for the Melbourne Boomers. And they are all smiles. What a start to their year. And here is your player of the game, unsurprisingly. It is Jordan Canada. Just to watch her and, and her, her handles, her court vision, as you said, she had 10 assists. And I'm not sure if we'll see it in these highlights, but wow, her crossovers are unbelievable. And uh, she utilized them today. And, but just finding her teammates, and that chemistry doesn't often exist really early in a season. She's just come on board. She's just gotten to Australia not that long ago. And so for her to be able to have those 10 assists, bring her teammates into the game, score herself in her second time with the uh, in the game, second game of the season. Great effort by Jordan Canada. Near yeah, triple double for her. What an outing. Nearly had one of the highlights of the season as well with the shake and bake on Mercedes <laughs> Russell. That was awesome. Here's your final stats from the ball game. Boomer's seven point win and the rebounds, 22 of them were offensive. That just kept climbing throughout the contest. And that's something that, that Cheryl and their coaching staff will take away and go, we can't, even though we're tall, we can't just expect the boards to fall in our hands. We've got to do the hard work. We've got to block out and go after the boards, chase them down. Because teams like the Melbourne Boomers, they're, they're gonna, you know, it gives them second chance opportunities. So you can't afford that. Let's have a look at some of the leaders as well, statistically from both sides. Three players and double figures for the Boomers and three as well for the Southside Flyers, led by their skipper, Beck Cole. And it was a double-double for Keely Froling, or near at least, 9 and 11. I thought she was good for Melbourne. I, I, you know, there were a lot of people on both teams that, that were good, especially Beck Cole for the Flyers. She just, she led by example. She's their new captain. I thought in this last quarter, uh, Mercedes Russell came to play. All of a sudden, she was posting up. She was doing her work early. She was getting it. She was finishing easily, and she had a real influence on it. And then, of course, we talked about Maddie Rachi and her feisty defense and, and how she really got into it at that last quarter especially. I thought we saw really a, a Nadia Poch game tonight. Three blocks, two steals, doing what she does best. She was great as well defensively. One game to come in round one. Tomorrow, the UC Capitals will host Adelaide at 5 per 30 p.m. Eastern time. Tune into that one as we round out the first week of the Signet WNBL. It's so great to be back, Liam. It felt like we had a long break. I know there was a few things in between, but whenever we start off, it gets more and more exciting. So great round one so far. Another game to come up. Can't, can't wait for the weeks to come. It's a great Great season ahead of us. Laurie Chizik, it has been a pleasure. A great doubleheader of hoops here on your Saturday. It is the Boomers getting the job done in the Melbourne Derby. 77 plays 70. Liam Ellison and Laurie.